Welcome in, boys and girls, fantasy football legends. We are going to be going back into the world of week two results this week. Uh, welcome into Nerd Sports Zone with John and Mike. John is sitting in uh, the chatting room here, and we're going to bring him in in just a minute here. But to warm you guys up, we're going to be talking week two results. We're going to be covering the Vikings and the Chargers this week. We are without fantasy red zone football, uh, Barrett Hulse this week, uh, so it's going to be back to the OG show uh, with both of us uh, shooting the shooting the crap about our teams and uh, some of the fancy rosters that we've made, the fancy roster moves that we've made. Uh, Aaron Rodgers came, had a really good game back, and then also uh, we're going to talk. We're going to talk some Q and A about uh, both of our teams in terms of. Um, how we can improve because John and I are both not perfect this year. Uh, and how can we get things turned around? We're going to take some learns that we're going to take some looks at some rosters that we're more so struggling with and probably going to shoot for about 45 to 50 minutes. Hey, Callista, what's going on? Uh, and Stetson says he does not give consent to talking about our, our matchup and our league last week. <laughs> All right. With that being said, Let's bring in my brother, John. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> What's up? We got, we got Kalisto in here. What's cool. up, Kalisto? So, John, you were, you told me a life update before we started. Why don't, you, why don't you give us a little taste of what you've had going on? Hey. Right, so, um... Well, first, you know, I got a new, I got a new position at work, so we're gonna, I'm gonna get a new, um, new hours, so new hours of availability here, but we're gonna make it work. Um, I think it's gonna work in our benefit to be, uh, benefit the benefit the show, you know, in the long run. Um, but but more efficient, it's gonna benefit me. I, I've been extremely unhappy at work, but uh, things are getting better. Things are getting better. Yeah. You love to see. You love to see people succeeding. Um, I I agree. I've been taking some steps too. Um, everything's kind of up in the air, so I don't know anything yet. But uh, it'll be better. It'll also benefit our show as well, and also just my overall happiness in That's what life. It's about. Uh, it's about being happy. Yeah, and I mean, you know, I'm not going to dwell on it. We're just going to be very brief with it. I actually ended my relationship with Heidi, so we're not going to be seeing any sort of like interruptions and rude snarky comments said to me in that sense um she's a good person i ended things just because they weren't working so we'll leave it at that that being said let's get into some football my man so kind of crazy weeks uh that we had uh in fantasy so just kind of walk me through your weeks and i'll walk you through mine how did your fantasy matchups go this week? Can you just kind of give me a, a rundown? Dude, I went five for five in fantasy this week. That was the first time it's ever happened. Can you say that one more time for me, please? I went five for five. Perfect lineups. Dominated. Not just one. I dominated most, most of my competition. That a boy. That a boy. Five. God, five for five. We're talking sports over here. We're talking sports. I went uh, four and I went four and two. Uh, Week one was rough. Moving on to week two, I was like, okay, I know I'm better than this. I know I I know that I'm not in a hole, and I trusted it. I trusted my lineups. I trusted my guts, and we went four and two. So six matchups, four wins, two losses. Not not too shabby to come back. Um, Aaron Rodgers brought me back in my dead light league with Callisto. Um, that was fun. Um, so with that being said, uh, how did you other, you said that anything else that you want to elaborate on, on your rosters that you noticed that you kind of could improve on? Well, uh, compared to last week, I actually made a move this week. Last mm-hmm. week I didn't pull the trigger on anything. Um, but I noticed, I noticed my, um, my weakness. Uh, I noticed a weakness that I have in in our league, our dynasty league, mm-hmm. that we do have that super flex position. Yep. And I'm, I don't feel like I'm utilizing it correctly. Uh, I've been playing 
you know, been playing Mac Jones, but Mac Jones hasn't been lights out. I mean, he hasn't been yeah. terrible, but I see a lot of my competition thriving in that super flex spot. Yep. So I did make a waiver claim. I put a dollar in, which is, you know, a dollar. Yep. No harm, no foul. I took joke. I took Brissett. Mm. There's a chance. There's a chance he go, uh, goes off. Am I 100% playing him? I'm not sold on it yet, but I do want to have that option. So I picked up a dollar. I spent a dollar. Got Jacoby Brissett for our dynasty league. If he has, since he is replacing uh, to a Tonga below Tonga below, I know I butchered it. He's replacing <laughs> him. So if I want to play him, I want to have that option. Yeah. Um, Stetson Myers says to not give up Mac Daddy Jones. I can't. That's why. I st- that's why I didn't drop him. I believe in him. It's just he's got growing pains, you know. And right. I just I see my points where I'm missing. I could have easily plugged in. Uh, I could have plugged in Rugs, which I, he went off for 22. The first, uh, the week two, week one was missed with another running back. Yeah. So Mac Jones is, uh, he's just not performing up to up to par yet, or he's not he's not hitting where I need to. Right, right. And if there's a better option, I gotta take the better option. So just so I don't cover up your your handsome That's face, John. Okay. okay. I'm gonna put um my matchup up, and I'll just kind of read some of some of our matchups off. Sure. So, uh, John's not in this league, but la- so last week, uh, I lost in week one in the Deadlight League, and I was really wanting to have a good bounce back week, and so I, I trusted my lineup, and I ended up winning 131.9 to 128.5 against the Denver Pirates. Uh, pretty significantly close matchup. Um, it was really, really good. Uh, so Corbin ha- ha- put a good lineup in. And he could have. This would. This could have went either way. Um, uh, so some waiver wire and roster moves I made at the end of this week um, didn't all necessarily go through, but I think I ended up getting. Let me take a look here. Who did I put in for? Um, if I go, so uh, yeah, I'm on week two. Sorry. Uh, so I won that week, and going into week three, I'm playing the Atlantis Falcons. Uh, Projection-wise, it's going to be sitting at 135 towards my direction, towards 123.7. But again, you don't want to trust that. Uh, Andrew has a really good team. So uh, the, check marks bo- the check mark boxes that we're looking at in this league right now is I know it's going to look a little wonky on, on camera here, so my apologies. Um, Better look so Aaron Rodgers to Kyler Murray, he has a check mark advantage. I disagree with that. Green Bay is going to be playing in San Francisco, but Aaron Rodgers is playing like a whole new quarterback after week two, and he is furious at the media. So I think that he's got a good position on what he wants to do. Um, I picked up Chris. Uh, I, I, I'm obviously you're going to roll with Christian McCaffrey. Last week I had Tyson Williams from the Ravens. He did well for me. Uh, Mike Evans was good. Justin Jefferson was good. Uh, but somehow I'm still lacking, apparently, against uh, sitting across the board from uh, not Ezekiel Elliott, but uh, Austin Eckler, Terry McLaurin, Keenan Allen. Uh, those three guys got the check marks for the advantage. Uh, I have Darren Waller over Dar- Dallas Goddard at the advantage, and then T. Higgins is sitting in my flex spot over Robbie Anderson for advantage, but I did go make a waiver wire priority, and I picked up um, the Panthers' defense. Uh, I saw him sitting there, and it said if I would have had this team last week, I would have scored 143 um, in terms of average. Um, In terms of the projection, it's 135, so we'll see what happens. On the bench, I made a few moves. Uh, I went and got Hollywood Brown. Uh, I'm surprised he was sitting there, but after that Ravens game, um, if you guys can go get Hollywood Brown, go get him. He should not be sitting on a waiver wire. Um, and then moving on to our league, John. Let's talk about it. So me and John have a face-off this week. We do. We do. Um, I'm really excited about this, actually. So, uh, let me just bring this up here a little bit. Head to head. I gotta admit, I gotta just get rid of this really quick here. Head to head, mano a mano. Head to head, mano a mano, me and John. 
Um, I ended up beating my buddy Matt pretty significantly last week in the Streamer League. Uh, I took a look at me and John's lineup. Uh, John, your co-host with me, my brother, my friend, he's sitting across from me. Sitting pretty. Callisto, thank you for the compliment on the on the decimal system. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Um, we did change that setting from uh, no decimals to no more ties. So um, we have Patty Mahomes versus Tom Brady in, in the fantasy matchup. And then I have the advantage there. But then going over to John's side, he has Austin Eckler, Chris Carson, the C.D. Lamb, a really stacked lineup. I'm going to be sitting with Aaron Jones, James Robinson, and Stephon Diggs. Again, this could go either way. Uh, I'm starting DJ Moore against Houston. Um, and then it looks like John's starting Julio Jones. And then we got Travis Kelsey and Cortland Sutton at tight end and flex. And then I'm going to be starting Rob Gronkowski and Damian Harris at my tight end and flex. That's tough. Look at that. Look at that lineup. It's this, a tough lineup. This is a... It's a heavy-hitting squad right <laughs> here. woo This is a shootout. Wow. Uh, I, I'm excited about this one. This is going to be fun. Yeah, look at it. This is this is what you want to see. This is, this is going to go either way. This is going to come down to the wire. I don't think this is going to be going one way or the other. Uh, and we both... I don't. I don't think I made any waiver wire transactions in this league. Okay. Did you? Okay. Uh, let's take a look real quick. Defensively, yeah, defensively, I, I've had to switch out. Um, okay. Waiver pick, not necessarily. I have it. I picked them up. You know, a lot, I feel like a lot of personally, I feel like in our in our league, defensive mm -hmm. players don't get rotated out as much. You know, kind of just yeah. stick them and forget them. I know you and I know me, and we rotate him with <laughs> any chance we can get. So. Yep, if we see a room for improvement, we go. I don't like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch it. It's a defensive player; they're interchangeable. You know, you don't have to have one locked down. But they, the thing is, some of them you can. Um, yeah. It's gonna be a tough matchup, but I definitely, I don't think I use a waiver pick on them. Right. But I did pick some up. I did interchange. I did have injuries from the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, it was, a, it was a weird, it was a bad week. We lost players. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of players went went down. Yeah, we will talk injuries here once we finish these, lo these rosters. Um, going into the Losers League, this is another league that, uh, John, are you in this league? I am in that league too. You are. John is in this league as well. Um, so I'll make sure to cover, I'll, I'll make sure to have you cover your team here. I'm going to be playing the Springwood Slashers uh, this week, which is a great fantasy football name. So that is a, that is a good name. Uh, I, all I want to say about the Yahoo League is I went, I'm now 2-0. We'll leave it at that. So, um, so in, in, the, in, the, in the Losers League, we got Springwood Slash, which is Robert, who's 2-0, and, and I'm 0-2 myself. Um, kind of struggling in this league a little bit. Um, I've had some, some injury woes, and that's not going to be an excuse that I, that I sit on. I, I'm going to find a way to get some Ws in this league. One way or another, I'm going to have to do it. Um, so I'm playing the Springwood Slashers, as I've said, and John from LA is playing Steph, is playing Steph's babies. And I love Steph. She's awesome. Uh, she is Normcore, uh, Ed, she is Normcore, she's part of Normcore Gaming and she's Hophead Ed's wife. Um, she's awesome. So if you guys don't know her Twitch channel, go check her channel out. Um, playing her this week. Yep, you're playing her this week. She's going down. <laughs> I don't know. There's a, there's a there's a reason John from two from LA's two and zero, and he's gonna show no mercy. You are two, SP. you are two zero in this league. That's it. I'm gonna keep it going. So this week we have Tom Brady versus Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones, Dalvin Cook, Kareem Hunt to my Tyson Williams, Amari Cooper to DeAndre Hopkins for me, T. Higgins versus Mike Evans for me, Devontae Parker for D versus DJ Chark Jr. for me. Uh, advantages uh, the next three spots go to Darren Waller, Leonard Fournette, and the Bills defense over to Spring Slashers. But I'm going to be playing Mark Andrews, Damian Harrison Flex, and then the Giants defense. Um, I have, I'm going against kicker Matt Gay, but I did go pick up Graham Gano. Clutch from 50 yards. I did go pick up Graham Gano as he scored 22 points in fantasy. If you guys need a kicker and he's he's still there, go try and find a way to get Graham Gano. 
<clears throat> um, and then, so John, give us a rundown on your matchup. I'm gonna pull this up real quick. I'm gonna go to my team. Of course, I got Steph's. I'm going against Steph's babies. And so, in my lineup, which I am two and zero, oh, and again, just <laughs> Justin Herbert's leading the parade. You know, he didn't have a great week. There was a lot. It was a lot wrong with that game. All right, but we're going against Kansas City. Um, and it, in order to compete with Kansas City, you're going to have to air it out. So Justin Herbert, I'm right, right ahead to the sunset. Let's go. Austin Eckler, PPR gold. Um, I struggle. This is my struggle bus right here. Saquon Barkley. Yeah. Um, if you have him, you, you feel the pain. You know what you know what we're going through. It's, it's yeah. rough to watch. And I, I've considered, you know, I've picked up backup. If I'm not mistaken, I picked up um, Cordero Patterson. I could be wrong, but that was someone I was looking to replace uh, p- potential Saquon Barkley for a week. You know, I've, I haven't done anything much with him. If I can find the points, I'm, you got to find him. Yeah. Did I say give up on Saquon? I said, hey, if you have a better option, you might as well. So I'm looking to that direction. Yeah. It is what it is. CD Lamb, uh, you great. You know, he's great on the Cowboys. He's consistent. And then I had this little gem of a piece, Mr. Cooper Cup. We love him. Fan of the... You know, I'm a huge fan of him. Cortland Sutton also had a great game. Yeah, he went off. You can't call, I mean, you can only really <clears throat> want a, a lineup such as last week when everything just hit. I don't think anything put less than double digits. So we're happy to see it. Yeah. Kyle Pitts, he was he was productive. Um, you know, he's in he's trending in the right direction. Melvin Gordon had a little a blip of a, a week on week two. He's gonna be fine. Uh, I may I may bench him, swap him out for somebody else. I'd have to take a look. But then Patriots defense, they're good against rookies. You know, I, I actually picked up, I believe I picked up the Carolina Panthers. Uh, if you saw them last week, they had a very good week. They're they're consistently putting over twenty points a a game. Yep. For defense, so I was if I was able to pick them up, I would. And if they're still available, go pick them up. They're not going to disappoint you. I think this week they have Atlanta. It writes itself. It does. Patriots, it really does. Yeah, it really does. And Tyler Bass, you know, Buffalo, safe. He's a he's a safe kicker. So that's what I'm going through this week. I like it. So since we've kind of covered a lot of the main rosters that we're a part of, yeah, let's move on to some some subplots uh, that we noticed in the season. So let's yeah. let's the more notable injuries. So obviously we saw two we get hurt. Um, I didn't see that hit, but he looked like he was banged up. Um, Tyrod Taylor got hurt. Um, Carson Wentz is now dealing with two ankle injuries. Two, Un- two ankle sprains? Come yeah. Because uh, apparently what happened in the game was Aaron Donald hit him on the left one first. You see that hit, though. And, and then the second time that he got hit later was on the right. So now he got he's- rolled up on... And- Aaron Donald's not a light guy. So no. when you're going to get rolled up by Aaron Donald and probably the defensive player of the year, that's coming full force. Uh, yep. He got wrapped up on. You just you saw him go. You saw him go down, hobbled off the field. Um, but he'll be back. Two, yeah. Two sprained ankles is not going to slow him down. He'll be back. Maybe not this week. I hope. He'll be back. Yeah, I hope Carson gets back in because that that yeah. team. Here's the thing: How can that that Colts team protect Phil Rivers, a guy who's way less mobile, but you can't protect? Carson Wentz when he's literally playing the same style. I, don't, I just said it though. He's mobile. So Cooper Rivers was mobile. So I just I don't I don't follow it. You know, like it doesn't make sense to me how it, Carson Wentz has been getting has been getting beat up. Like it like it's not pretty. So um, that being said, moving on to the the other injuries. What other ones did you notice, John? That were a little kind of substantial in the league. And. I mean, same carousel. I wa- okay. So this weekend, I watched uh, I watched the 49ers and Eagles game. Yep. Uh, I was hanging out with my friend, who's a 49ers fan. Oh no! So I said, "Hey, yeah, you want to watch your game? Let's watch your game." So we watched Eagles. Eagles defense looks good, guys. I mean, maybe it's just the 49ers, but they're playing aggressive. Yeah. I hate I hate to say it because I hate them. Eagles. Not my not my favorite not my favorite flavor. 
yeah. looking good on defense. Yeah, given given the loss and everything, I mean, the Eagles' defense did play actually pretty. They played a pretty aggressive. decent. They played, aggressive. Played, played a pretty a decent aggressive game, I thought. So, oh, um, just, I was impressed. I was impressed. Yeah, and then the Cowboys pulled out their win, but I mean, it seems that that offense is a little hard to read right now, fantasy purposes and just overall, like football wise, because. You know, now we know Dak is back, and, you know, he didn't have a very good game week two. Uh, I think he scored a total of, like, seven fantasy points. Um, yeah, low, low numbers. Same with Justin Herbert. It was a low. I think this is poor calling. Poor calling. A lot of pulled back plays. Big plays are pulled back. Yep. Yeah, and I, I can completely agree with that. And um, I think that it's it's interesting to to think about you know well, okay well why are the cowboys running tony pollard more than they are zeke i mean that's got to be frustrating for zeke so and if watching hbo hard knocks there, there's all this hype behind like getting ezekiel yeah. elliott running again it's like it's well then you got to run him you can't like you, you i was just gonna say you got to run him you can't you can't uh give the guy the shaft and like not give him his opportunities. I mean, week one, he had 11 attempts. I don't know what it was week two. He had a little bit of a game, but I saw a meme this week that was pretty funny that said, like, X amount of days since 100 rushing yards and one touchdown. It was like 640 days or something like that. It's crazy. It's disgusting, man. Uh, definitely, um, was, as a Cowboy fan, it's got to be disappointing was, was what I wanted to say earlier. Like, Tony Pollard is just more productive with with still getting less reps i reached out for tony pollard in the waiver wire thinking I did too. thinking I put I, a bid in. thinking i could get him for like eight bucks and he, he went, overbid he, me i put he, him for five <laughs> he went he went for like 30 bucks like 30 35 dollars yeah. in our league uh, hey when they're ready to cut when they're ready to just fully run tony pollard it's gonna happen yep that's kind of where i'm thinking this is trending to uh, because that or that or the Cowboys are trying to lean towards like a running back committee for like a first down, second down, and then maybe they're gonna put Zeke in on third downs. I don't know what their plan is right now, but I know that the one if you are in a fantasy league and you have CD Lamb, I know you're in a good spot because the CD Lamb is gonna be the guy that they're gonna be throwing to as much as they can. Because I think Mar- Amari Cooper got hurt today in practice. Sure. Uh, that you hate to see it. Great for fantasy. You hate to see it though. Yeah, he was and, supposed to have a big year. He was supposed, to, but so, it just hurt, right? No, nothing reported. Yeah, yet. I haven't heard anything major on it yet. I just heard like someone just texted me today about it. So another cowboy went down. Another cowboy so, went down. Uh, Ste- they will shut him down. Ooh, yeah. Stetson, my, Stet, my, Stetson's my friend. I watch football with every week. He uh, and he's one of him and Hayes are one of my best friends. Actually, they they actually uh, like Stetson is an Eagles fan. So okay, okay. Yep. Dang, it's going to be good. Youth youth on youth, man. Young rookies on C.D. Lamb is only the second year. He's yeah. got that third best pass. Hey, like I said, Eagles look good. They impressed me. That's the only game I really watched. <laughs> yeah, I like I it. I, I like the confidence in it. Um, you know, obviously the 49ers, are, their running back situation is something to monitor. Um, but we've seen some interesting injuries needless to say this this week alone so hopefully that slows down um uh getting rob gronkowski was the right call he had another big game look at you i was happy about that yeah so that was a free agent pickup too huh and uh yeah 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 he was sitting on the waiver wire so i went and got him and the thing is too is uh the i don't see it slowing down at least past week four because here's the situation is tom brady at this point is on pace to score more points in the first four weeks of a football season tell me about my fantasy quarterback one more time tom brady is on pace to score more points in the first four weeks than he ever has before and you and you, and you know where he might surpass the record new england Sheesh. Sheesh. They might go into New England and break records, and they might break. He might break a, a passing record in New England as a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. That's disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> that's disrespectful. Oh God, yeah, that that's not gonna be pretty. That's before, man, that's right there. That's right around the corner. 
So let's move into talking about our team's matchups and what we thought of that this weekend. Let's just get the crowd warmed up here with with that with that skull chant, you know. <laughs> God, if you've ever been in that live, you would know the chills it gives you. I love a good I love a good fan unity moment, you know? Yeah, it's fun. It's fun to be part of it. So let's talk about the Vikings. Uh, I thought it was another good game in the books for Kirk Cousins. I think he's playing at a faster rate than what he was last year. We're starting the season off quick. Um, the offense is moving the ball a little bit. Adam Thielen's being clutch like he always is. Justin Jefferson is doing his job. Um, and he'll, Justin Jefferson's still going to have his big games, guys. I know he's not explosive like everybody wants him to. Give him time. But we're at a point right now where like ju- people know Justin Jefferson is got a major target on his back. So of course the ball's going to go to Adam Thielen a little bit. Of course the ball's going to go to KJ Osborne on third downs a little bit. Um, I went up and I I picked up at KJ Osborne in one of our leagues because I thought, huh, well maybe it was one good week. Well now he's had two weeks of like double digit points. I think. 20 points and four or 20 points and 17 points uh and he was kind of like way down on like the wide receiver list that were available so i went i went after him and i got rid of nelson Aguilar because he was just kind of going away it's not the homer syndrome i don't even have very many vikings on my team stetson um i went i went strictly for numbers um so that that's my thing with it um here's my issues and takeaways from the game is our defense is not what we are supposed to have. Uh, Nick Vigil has been great. I think Anthony Barr, I'm, I'm, I'm going to double down on it. Um, Anthony Barr can go somewhere else. You know, if you're not going to play um, and you're going to be hurt all, all the time, this is like two years of being hurt now, um, let Nick Vigil come in and take your spot because clearly he's going to. The way he's playing. He got a pick six, and then he got a a pick later in the game. And then Harrison Smith is out there by himself, Stetson. So I just feel like this Vikings defense is really letting the Vikings offense down. The Vikings offense is rolling at a fast rate. They're getting down the field. And to any Vikings fan that is actively going on a Facebook page or a Twitter page, and you are blasting Kirk Cousins, I'm just going to tell you, you are... Foolish. Foolish. And here's why. Kirk Cousins is literally doing his job. And he's starting fast this year, as I've already said. And we have been in multiple situations before halftime and in the fourth quarter when it the weight of the world has been put on that guy's back to go get us in field goal position to win the game. Right? Pretty simple concept. So now when he does that, he gets you to the 20-yard line. He does his job until he's told to stop. And I say that for a reason. I'll get into that reason next. But let's let's address the first issue. Another missed field goal to win the game. Right? I believe there was 31 to 40 seconds with one timeout left on the clock when the Vikings were at the 21-yard line and Mike Zimmer sent out the kicking unit, which I'll get into in a minute. But you you kick that field goal. It's like 31-yard attempt. You got to hit that kick. You have to. This is a game winner. You know, like you walk off the field with one second left. It's done. So here's my frustration on the other end that I didn't speak on yet is Mike Zimmer has no clock management skills. And I've been holding back on this for past two years of not talking about it but he has no clock management skills again i'm grateful for everything he's done for our defense but the fact that we can't seem to manage the clock in the fourth quarter ever or no or you know i'm not even gonna say halftime adjustments anymore because if you listen to the, the mannings the manning brothers on monday night football they talked about halftime adjustments how they're, they're not really a thing like you go in and announcers and like commentators on TV make themselves look foolish because even the players are like halftime adjustments. Like we don't, 
we don't get time to talk about them, but everything. By the time we get into the few in, into the locker rooms and sat down, we have a couple conversations and we go back out. Aaron Rodgers talked about it too on Pat McAfee. He's like, I agree. He said that he agreed with the Manning brothers, and he said that there is really no major halftime adjustments that uh, had happened in the locker room. They happened during the game. Mike Zimmer doesn't adjust. He doesn't change the way his defense is running. And I mean, for God's sakes, we let a rookie wide receiver who's very talented, by the way, in Rondell Moore, be wide open with nobody within 40 yards of him. And he goes and scores a touchdown. Like, that's insane to me. Like, the fact that you you know how fast this guy is, you know how good of hands he is and the speed that he can carry once he gets going, and you don't get somebody on him, that doesn't seem to add up for me. The linebackers did their job. The the defensive front did their job for the most part with good pressure on Kyler Murray. But at, we got a problem at cornerback and safeties. Uh, Harrison Smith is out there by himself. I completely agree. But what I want to talk about is how you do not manage the clock. You Let's let's, let's break this down. You have one timeout, right? With 41 seconds, you're at the 20-yard line. So if you're on first and goal at this point, right, why would you not – Take the time for one more play, maybe a running play, maybe an outside fade, get like five, six more yards, get a little closer, and then go out of bounds, stop the clock again. Okay, well, now you got time for one more play to get a little closer. Maybe you even score. Maybe you score a touchdown and you put the game out of reach. I don't know. That's a possibility. But you got one timeout, and you got, I think it, I think it was 40 seconds or 31 seconds. I can't remember. But you literally let... 30 seconds or whatever, however much time was left, roll off the clock down to like two seconds and you send your kicker out. You just wasted your last time out. You just wasted the drive by sending a kicker out that clearly, I guess, can't hit, like made a mistake and missed a, missed a game winner field goal again as a Vikings fan. Like this is beginning to be frustrating to watch. Mike Zimmer needs to go. We need a younger-minded coach who is going to outthink other coaches because we consistently get out coached in big games. And to all the Kirk Cousins haters, stop it because he, frankly, is oh my god! Like he is doing very well in Minnesota. This is actually like three of the three or four of the best career seasons he's ever had in Minnesota, and we're wasting them. Go get a coach. Can't bank timeouts for the next game. Exactly, Stetson. True. Yeah, so that's my thoughts on the Vikings game. We should be 2-0. Uh, the refs screwed us week one, ultimately. Uh, and then going into week two, Mike Zimmer and his poor judgment on clock management screwed us week two, along with the kicker. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm calm now. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Go for it, John. How'd the Chargers do? Well, we lost. Guess what? We got screwed by the refs this week. You did. We we, we were watching that game. I mean, it, you hate to see it. We had about two touchdowns that I can recall that were pulled away. Um, easy touchdowns. We should have had this game in the bag, but uh, you know we can't blame we can't blame the refs. I mean, a lot of America will. And I will too, but you really can't put it all on him. There was definitely performance issues. Uh, two interceptions from Justin Herbert. It's unlike him. He's, you know, he's got to shake it off. It's going to be fine. And it's good, though. I mean, it's good to know, get it out early, get the losses out early. You're going to learn from them. We have a young yep. young team, new head coach. We have to know what adversity uh, to, we need adversity. 12, pen 12 penalties for 99 yards. Ridiculous. It's bad. We have to clean it up. We have to clean it up. If we're gonna be, uh, if we're gonna be doing penalties. We gotta, we gotta get better at that. We can't. It's gonna, kill, it's gonna kill us in the in the long run. So coach has definitely got some coaching, um, and it's growing pains. We're a new system, new quarterback, new offense, new defense. We're gonna have errors. It's the best time to get it out of the way now. Yep, I completely agree with that. Next week we have a division rival and probably the division rival to beat, which is the uh, we got the Chiefs next week. So it's oh, going to be God. a loaded competition. Um, it's going to be a shootout. Do you think we get a shootout again? Absolutely. I think we do. You know, if anyone has Patrick's number, it's going to be my boy Justin Herbert. Did we send him 0-2? Oh, 
for two weeks, two losses in a row. Let's do that. <laughs> I'm as a fan. I can see it. I think my team has the the talent to do it. We definitely have the talent to do it. If you if you watch a little bit of last week's game, you you know Justin Herbert has the arm strength, and we have the receivers to get there. My concern is that that uh, the Chiefs are coming off of a a pretty tough loss with from the Ravens, so they're going to be a little fired up to play. Of course they are, and it's at I believe it's at their stadium, so of course we're going in. We're the underdogs. Yeah. I mean, you'd be the dog anyway. I mean, that's just the way it is, you know. But Herbie's 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 been an underdog in every game he's played. So I mean, once Herbie right. gets going, and it'll be got, all right. I think I think last year we lost by single digits. Last time we played him. Yeah, it'd be yeah, a good game. We, we can have him. We can have him. It'll be a good game. Um, uh, just go a future, uh, just just a little tidbit. Yeah. Remember when we did our summer predictions of how our seasons were gonna go? Yeah. So if, if you still have it next to you. Check what I said about week two. I said week two was going to be a loss. You said week two was going to be a loss. I did. I got it right here. Uh. No, you said you had it as a win. I have it. I have it written down as a loss. Oh, okay. Maybe I misheard you. No worries. Anyway, that's what I told my sister. At least was a Cowboys fan. <laughs> Herbie yeah. did look comfortable, uh, look comfortable last year in, in his office, and this year looks a little bit struggling. It's a new system, new coaches. Yeah. Um, but he has. We have time. We have the mentorship. I believe in our coaches. I believe in our staff. Really. Um, you know, it's okay to get the losses. We're gonna have. What's one loss? You know, we. It's, yeah. it's We're gonna have a loss. Get it out of the way now. I agree. Uh, let's let's go on to the subject of. Aaron Rodgers coming back here and the Packers game a little bit. Just take a couple minutes on that. So obviously this was a big game. This was a division game against the Lions. Um, and the Packers before this game were 17-5 and against the, the Lions with Aaron Rodgers. Um, Rodgers comes in, does his thing, comes back, goes on Pat McAfee show for Aaron Rodgers Tuesdays, just, you know, rips into the media for giving him a hard time and, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it, really right, did. there was a big emphasis on that. Yeah, so I mean, I think that Rodgers showed that hey, I'm still here. We're gonna play. Um, and by the way, because I beat Stetson in our matchup, um, Stetson now has to shave his goatee off and shave his facial hair like Aaron Rodgers because he actually has long hair. Stetson has long hair like Aaron Rodgers, Jeez. so he's gonna like get a. We're gonna get him like a Packers jersey. <laughs> He's gonna. Stetson a married man. Stetson's a married man. Oof! Look out, ladies. He's taken. <laughs> so it's gonna be funny. Uh, it's gonna be a good time. Me, me, and Stetson had a really good matchup actually. But the problem with it was was that uh, uh, he was projected to win, and then like uh, the Thursday night game, I played um, Sterling Shepard and I played F1 McLaurin just to give myself the best shot and I put in a double edged sword and then uh, Stetson texted me about half like near like halfway through the fourth fourth quarter and he was he's like, You are so lucky <laughs> You love to see it. I was like, Hey man, I trust Girl in my gut. Blew up. I trust in my gut, F- you know. F one was uh, F what did F one do week two? Twenty? Oh, yeah, he she she had a um. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Stetson said, "Let's just say Mike started the best three wide receivers you could possibly start oh, on a smart. team in our league." <laughs> nice. I had, yeah, I had I had Cooper Cup at thirty six points. Um, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> That's worth it. Some leagues. Oh, yeah, okay. Cooper <laughs> Cup, ladies and gentlemen. Cooper um, Cup. Cheers. Okay. Um. Yeah, so I, I started that double-edged sword, and then it just kind of like went downhill from there for Stetson. But actually, Stetson came back on Monday night. Um, he had Kyler Murray on, um, and he had Kyler Murray last week, and that kind of brought him back up. So going into the like, the Monday night game, I was quite nervous because I was like, I don't know, like because he had Jamal Williams who had a big game the previous week. So I was like, I, I told, I even told Stetson, I said, I don't think I got this wrapped up yet, man. 
like I got I got a little bit of I got a, got a little ways to go here. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so Aaron Rodgers is back. I think we can all, you know, as Aaron Rodgers would say, relax. R E L A X. You know, we're gonna like think they're gonna run the table. They're gonna Packers looked good. And you know what? I just wanted to say this. Condolences to Aaron Jones and his family with his father. Um, I don't know if people saw this or not, but if you watch the after game report, he lost a necklace that had his father's ashes in the end zone uh, That's crazy. Uh, that he proceeded to get four tutties in this last week. And it was a big game for Aaron Jones. And yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, Stetson Myers uh, called the, called the loss at 3 p.m. <laughs> uh, and they did find the the grounds were the groundskeepers uh, or training staff at Green Bay did find the ashes. But what I here's what I took out of it the most was that when Aaron Jones was asked about it, he said, "If I lost it, I lost it." He said, "I lost it in the end zone, and that's where my dad my he said that's where my dad would want it." He said, "I could feel my dad telling me if I lost it, at least lose it in the end zone." So. Crazy. Uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, it was the game actually kind of reminded me of when um, Brett Favre's father passed away, and he went on to shred the the Raiders for uh, a murder of a game. So uh, Aaron Rodgers, well Brett, well Brett, well yeah, Brett Favre. He went out, he played, and I think his dad died. God, it's been a while since I talked about that. Actually, I think his father passed away like the night before or something like that, or sometime in the week, and then. He still went and played because Brett Favre always said my dad would have wanted me to go play. So, yeah. thank you for the host cards. Um, hey. But yeah, I thought it was pretty cool that they did that. So, uh, I, you know, congratulations to the Packers on getting back on the right track, and also condolences to Aaron Jones and his family in terms of uh, losing his dad. So, um, I'm glad the guy had a good game, and I feel like he's going to continue to have more big games. And he's going to be a little more motivated to play well now. So Older doobies. Packers suck. Packers suck. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, Boulder doobies is a Lions fan. Oh. Right? You're a Lions fan? I think you're a Lions fan, Lander, aren't you? Um, so let's oh, move boy. into some of the, the Q&A that you wanted to do, John. All right. Let's see. It. Well, let's see. Anyone? So, if you guys have any questions in the chat, you can put something in the chat. Questions? Yeah, this is your this is your time to shine. You can ask anything. We'll try and answer to the best of our abilities and not not give you bad advice. And no, then five, um, five, ladies and gents, I'm here. four and I'm two, here five and five. Here. I mean, you're here for it. Yeah. Here for you. <laughs> you got you got you got two wise men here after a successful week. So, this is unbiased advice. Yeah, I mean, you can be in this. If it's not charger related, then yeah. You can be in the same league as me, and I will still give you the same advice I would give anybody else. What if you're me? I don't even know who you are, so let's uh, shoot the question. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Landon, I think I think Landon is. Are you against me, Landon? Oh, it's probably you. I don't know. I I did the same thing with Callisto. I'll still I'll still tell you what I think. Like, um, for example, we got this guy in our other league that is just a big old. He he's just a big old dum dum, and he like he he made this trade this week that made it was like awful. Um, he made this trade and it was like holy crap! Like that I would never. Nobody would take that, and he like didn't talk to people in our fantasy chat. He talked to people. He talked to the person that he wanted to trade like through like a different app and everything. And we we're like, no, you could talk about your trades like like adults inside our fantasy chat about the trade. So they put this trade through, and then Stetson and a, some a few people went to Stetson about the trade. And they're like, yo, this trade's kind of jank like we shouldn't we shouldn't allow that trade to go through so then we put it got put up for veto and everybody vetoed it he was get basically giving away a bunch of like guys that were possibly hurt or not the same caliber level players for alvin Kamara, and we're like no not absolutely not like That's brutal. like if some guys if, if you're willing to take that offer though like there's got to be consequences for that yeah so 
the 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 takeaway and the giveaway were not there. So then the whole week it's been arguments of like, why not? Well, why not this trade? But you guys vetoed this and that, and it's like, bro, your trade was unfair. So tonight he even offered a trade. Um. Tonight he offered a trade. Or he talked about offering it. And he said, what if I offered Travis Kelsey? What if I offered TJ Hawkinson um, and Tyreek Hill for Travis Kelsey and Keenan Allen? And I said, the wide receiver value is there, but I said the tight end value is not. And he said, well, TJ Hawkinson has had two good weeks. And I'm like, well, Travis Kelsey's had four good years in fantasy. I was like, the wide receiver value is there. The tight end value is not. I said, we could be seeing a breakout season for TJ Hawkinson now, and maybe that's what's going to make him a very great tight end in fantasy. But what I said about it was, you can go to your waiver wire and find a pretty standard wide receiver that's going to put up some points for you every week if you need somebody, right? You can't do that at tight end. No. Like, And the fact that it's the Detroit Lions, no offense, Landon, I don't trust that team. I don't trust Jared Goff. Like, in like, I don't trust two weeks with this offense with Jared Goff. Like, I'm not ever trading Travis Kelsey for TJ Hawkinson. Like, it's way too early for that. So, I was like, the wide receiver value is there. Way, like, ridiculous. Hmm. Yeah, so he offered... Uh, he offered uh, Robbie Hawkinson, Dolphins defense... And Latavius Murray, oh, Robbie Anderson, TJ Hawkinson, the Dolphins defense, Latavius Murray for Alvin Kamara and Jamar Chase. Damn. (laughs) No. (laughs) That trade was vetoed so fucking fast gone like like it got put up to the league after stetson put it up for veto and he didn't even he did not even yeah he did he did this trade after scoring 190 points damn so it's like nah man are you Mm-mm. trying to take advantage of people now what can you repeat that for me please oh what? now it looks like you're trying to take advantage of people okay hey stetson can you clip that please <laughs> Um, we're going to send that, we're going to send that to Wally. We're going to send that to Wally. Um, That's unbiased. I don't even know. (laughs) (laughs) He's kind of taking advantage of your friends, but it is. What What? can you, can you repeat that one, John? What did you say? Taking advantage of your friends. All right. All right. Moving on. So yes, this is going to be unbiased advice for the next five or six minutes. Give us what you got. Callisto, what is on your mind? Let's go. Let's start with you, Callisto. I, I know you had a question. You said you're unsure of some. You're unsure of some stuff. What's on your mind? Well, listen, listen, while they write that out, I got one. I'm trying. I'm shopping for a backup court. I'm shopping for a backup QB. Okay. In our league, I'm shopping around. Like I'm willing it. to give up Julio Jones. What? What? quarterback at, at that caliber would you say is worth a julio jones uh i mean he... I'll, I'll tell you what i put out there what'd you put out i put i, I felt out the waters for who was it this is our, for our dynasty um oh it's a dynasty okay right this is our dynasty one teddy bridgewater teddy's playing well he's he, he probably he'd probably be he'd probably be a good super flex right safe at 20 points but i'm thinking it's julio jones had a hot week i think he may be worth more okay you know i feel like i, I could get what do you do would you think i could get better value for that what i would do personally if it was my team and i had julio and I, and I had the luxury of having julio after a hot week if you are in need of a quarterback and remember this is a dynasty league so i mean right. you're you're looking at longevity i mean if you don't win this year you could try and win next year too so and focus on building your team this year um i would maybe try to get one more week into julio um 
see if he has another big game. And then if you're still looking for that backup quarterback, you can. Justin Fields. I have Mac Jones. You you can sell. You could. But I'm not. I'm not. You know. I just want safety. I want. I want to know what I can get for him. You you could probably sell uh, Julio for a higher trade if you get a solid two three weeks of high numbers, and then okay. and then ship him to um, somebody for, you know, um, a higher price. Okay. I hear you. Ingram, Kalisto, don't don't even do that. George Kittle versus Evan Ingram. George Kittle. If you're still holding your breath on in Ingram, uh, I have him on the bench comfortably, Kalisto. Uh, comfortably. I have him on the bench <laughs> comfortably. Start, yeah, start George Kittle. Ryan Tannehill, Ryan Tannehill versus Dak Prescott. That's an interesting one. Who who are they playing this week? Scott will be playing the Eagles, and Ryan Tannehill will be playing the Titans. Who are the Titans playing? Titans are playing. Second. Memento. Indiana. Hmm. I would. I'd probably play Tannehill. I, yeah, I mean. You can't go wrong with either one, though. I mean, Dak had a bad game, but. A Dak against a divisional rival against the Eagles, who would love to upset the. Gotta think about it. That is a tougher one. Um. I think or if it's in Philly, ooh, I may I may just give it to Philly. I think what I would do because of the NFC East is I would and that Dak having that bad game like week two. Uh, I play Ryan Tannehill over that Colts secondary. Just matchup wise, um, unbiased. unbiased. Yeah, that's what I would do. But that is a tougher situation. But yeah, I would start Ryan Tannehill. If it were my team, I'd start Ryan Tannehill if that was my two options. All right. Anyway, if you have any other questions, you shoot them up. We got a got time for one more, I think. Yeah, we got time for one more. Um, I'll bring another one while they give you time. Okay. Would we the super flex mm-hmm. rugs or Mac or or Jones? Uh, repeat it. Henry Rugs. At Miami, mm-hmm. Mac Jones against New Orleans. Mm. Um, Super flex. I'd probably go. What's the on the app that you're that you're on? What's like the rankings? Sleeper. I uh. Like for who they're against? Like what's the color? What's the ranking? Oh, they're uh okay. Henry Ruggs is like an orange. Okay. And then Mac Jones is a red. I'd probably go orange. I'd probably go Henry Ruggs. Jones versus New Orleans. I know. But. But it's also Jones. But it is a quarterback, veteran, though. You know what I mean? I think, of, I think of the veteran coaches. The veteran coaches. I feel like. Uh, I going uh, Going off the matchup. Just to like push. Just to push the odds. Sure. Mac Jones. Okay. It's it's bold, but I feel like. But it can happen. You're right. It's a quarterback, you know. Yeah. You can easily drop. You can easily drop some touchdowns. Yeah, because you got you're 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 looking at Jameis Winston versus Mac Jones, so it's gonna be fun. So I think I think Mac Jones would be the right choice. Okay. All right, stream. Look at that. We're gonna go about to go back to back five for five. Let's go. I mean, write it down. We can talk about it next week. How we do? Yeah, Stetson, you should come on next week. Uh, I'm also gonna be inviting Run Boys Robbie on here next week. Um, I'm gonna let him know that we got a spot for him. Um, I'm gonna be going over there to the Run Boys Fantasy Network after this in like five minutes. So we're gonna take the last five minutes to close the week out. Let's do it. And then, uh, you know, we've talked about our mat our our matchups going into the week. So let's talk about the predictions that we got for this week's matchup. So John, if you want to be my computer guy again like you always are and you're a legend yeah. at it if you want to pull up the matchups let's let's read some of these matchups off and let's let's All go right. through them let's, just, let's do a speed run yeah let's do a speed run on this one today speed run. Speed run. As, speed as quick run. as we can i guess you know we'll cover it all right we start this thursday night we have the panthers at texans panthers panthers that defense is two lights out right now. yep that's um 
Chargers at Chiefs. Chiefs. You know what? I respect it. You, know, <laughs> you got to respect my opinion. I got to go with my boys. Uh, we're both one and one. We're not even. It's gonna be a good game right now. We gotta step it up. So, you know, we gotta. Either way, someone's. Here's someone's my. Is about to change. Here, here's my outlook on it, really quick. I'm going. Thank you for the gift of sub, Clisto. Um, here, here's my outlook on it. Tyreek Hill has been exposed that you can stop him from by, because of the Ravens game. It's gonna op it's gonna open the passing game up for guys like Meikle Hardman and. Uh, some of the other younger guys that the Chiefs got. So I think that it's going to change things up. Travis Kelsey, uh, it's going to open some things up. That they're going to, the Chiefs are going to play a little more angry, but Tyreek Hill could have a big game if it's, if it's explosive, but I, but I could also see where like now we're going to see that Tyreek Hill that we always see in fantasy where all of a sudden people know how to stop and cover him. And he, his, his volume and productivity kind of goes a little bit down because he's getting double, triple covered a lot. I would love to see my rookies pick off Tyree kill that would yeah. be amazing asante samuel jr let's go so that's my thought good it's a good thought you know and that can easily have, i it, we can cover him we're just gonna see if it can coach daly you know the rams we've done it before mm -hmm. um we played we played them so we have experience let's see what happens let's go to the next one washington at bills Buffalo is going to get it right. Big game. Uh, it's going to be a great game either way. Tyler, Taylor Heineke, I picked him up in a couple leagues for a backup quarterback. Um, I, I just think it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good game. I'm I'm going uh, Buffalo though. I do think uh, I think Buffalo gets the win too. Simply put, I think Buffalo is too talented to. Don't lose. don't sleep on Heineke though because he's played against two good defenses already and he's played very well. Now he's going into the Bills Mafia. That's that might be tough for uh, you know. We'll see. We'll see. Samuel Jr. Ha Asante Samuel Jr. has the best has the best QBR rating when thrown against him. Oh shit. <laughs> well, we'll Still see what happens. Got a pick. Still got a pick. I am at it. Let's see. Bears at Browns. Browns. Let's see the Browns. The Bears are trying to figure out how they're going to use Justin Fields this week uh, if he plays. And I'm going to say that it's not going to be beneficial for the Bears in, that, in terms of that. I think the Browns win this game. I see the Browns winning it too. Again, I just think it's too talented. I think, you know, Baker Mayfield. Uh, oh, wait. He's coming off banged up too. Nick Chubb's, going to, have, Nick Chubb's going to have a good game though. He'll take some weight off of Baker Mayfield's shoulders. Absolutely. So play the running game. That's what it sounds like. Play the running game. Both, if you have both Hunt or Chubb, both safe plays. Mm -hmm. uh, Ravens at Lions. Ravens. Yeah. Raven, Hollywood, Hollywood Brown's going to have another good game. But here's my only thing with this is that I didn't say this earlier when we talked about the Ravens. They need to stop running the ball with Lamar Jackson as much as they are because that's going to get him hurt. This is what people have been saying for the last year or two is Lamar Jackson is one of the best running backs in the NFL. We got to see that arm. We got to see the pocket presence because if they just keep running with Lamar, they're going to get a couple weeks of film on him and this offense is going to get slowed way down. I'm telling you, like this this offense will not survive the longevity of the season as film comes out on it because they're going to know how, exactly how to do spies and covers and and change up the form, the defensive formations. They're not, they're gonna figure out how to stop this. So, you, so Lamar's gonna have to figure out how to pass the ball effectively, and not be a running back all the time. He's, he's one of the best runners. He's isn't he the third third highest uh, rusher? Right he's now? he's high on the list. I know I know that he's high on the list. Yeah, look out. I, he's definitely top ten right now. I saw I saw a uh, little clip or animation on it. Uh, next game we have. Colts at Titans. Titans are going to win this one. Colts are having off to a rocky start, and if Carson doesn't play, which I hope he does, I yeah. hope he's hope, he, hope he's healthy enough to play. They gave him a test run of practice today, so we'll we'll see what the updates are on that with Carson. But uh, I'm going the Titans on this. Derrick Henry yeah, got Derrick Henry Derrick Henry got hot. What are your what, what what's your thought? Hot. How are you going to stop it? You can't stop a hot Derrick Henry. Nope. Not not in the regular season, definitely not. 
Um, Saints at Patriots. Go ahead. Shootout. Shootout. Um, shootout? It's going to be... Mac up record numbers for him? Not record numbers, no, but it's going to be a shootout of a game between the two teams. I think that Jameis is going to be wanting to come come off of a bad game after a really good week one against Green Bay. But, you know, that's what I was telling people is it was against Green Bay. Green Bay's defense isn't that great, to be to be completely honest. That's why the Packers tend to find themselves in shootouts every week is that their defense isn't that good. They can't, they, they can't get off the field. Um, so that's always been a Green Bay Packers trait. So um, I think the tougher defenses that uh, Jameis is going to face, he's going to struggle a little more. But this game could be this game could be kind of a little bit of a shootout. I think upper twenties, uh, lower thirties. It'd be fun. I'm, I'm, uh, the side I'm going to go on, Bill Belichick and the Patriots win. I think the Saints take this one. Oh, it's at home. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. 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 All right. I didn't even know that. <laughs> that changes things for me. That changes things. Like for me, environment. That's tough. Yep. No one just goes into the goes into Gillette. Yep. Um. So I'm gonna next one. Falcons and Giants. Uh, oh, both. Oh, and Gi- two. Oh, I'm Giant Giants. Reluctantly, the Giants. I don't think Giants the Falcons are a mess right now. Again, this year, um, going the Giants, Sterling Shepard or uh, uh, Darius Slayton, kind of. Not or not, not Slayton. Well, Daniel Jones, dude. Go Giants, dude. Giants. Who, the, who's the other wide receiver? I picked him up in Dynasty. Sterling Shepard. There's the other. Kenny one. Galladay, and then. Slayton. Slayton, right? Slayton. Yeah, I picked him up. So, um, I think that it's going to be the wide receivers that get the weight of the world put on their shoulders. But Danny Dimes is going to show up. Uh, make some Saquon, big plays. Maybe maybe Saquon shows up for me this week. Maybe. Ho- maybe hopefully, yeah. I think they're in a better place than the Falcons to get things going. Though, but I'll put it that way. If there's any time to catch momentum. Now's the time. It ain't going to be a pretty game though. We'll see. So next game. So we. Oh wait. You went Giants? Giants. I went Giants. Bengals at Steelers. Joey B. Uh, that Steelers defense is really good. Yeah. But I'll go I'll go upset alert on this game and I'll say that the Bengals find a way to win. Yeah. Um and yeah, that is true. Big Ben's hurt, so Big Ben's hurt, so but, what, Mason Rudolph. Yeah, makes it makes a little bit of a change. Um, I think that Joe Burrow is going to have a good game with Jamar Chase. Uh, Joe Mixon will be all right, but um, I feel like they'll get look at look at the offensive going the offensive side of things going a little bit. I think Steelers defense wins this game. T Higgins, too. I think Steelers defense wins this game. All right. Look for the turnovers. Experience versus the inexperienced. Uh, that's just me. That's why I, I love it. Defense wins. Cardinals. Cardinals at Jaguars. Cardinals. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're both unanimous on that one. I'm gonna go with the Cardinals. <laughs> I just don't think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's rough. It's rough out there for the Jaguars. Yeah, for sure. They're, they're, they're trying to get that offense figured out. I think the Jaguars have a better game on offense this day than they've had. I think they get some things turned around. James Robinson's going to get going a little bit because they started in, including him into the workload a little more last week. But uh, James Robinson, I think, will have a better game, um, not just because I have him in one league. I just think that reading up on him a little bit and watching the game a little bit, like they're going to try and get him going a bit. So, yeah, When you talk to, when you talk to Robbie later, uh, ask him that question I asked you last week. Shoot it to me in Discord. Shoot it to you in Discord, okay. So I don't forget. That's right. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take the Cardinals too. Just too. Too talented right now. Hard to stop. Yeah. Uh, it, you got a veteran coach going against an inexperienced coaching quarterback. It's going to show. And then if you have the defense, play the defense. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Jets at Broncos. 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 Broncos undefeated right now. Jets still can't taste the win. No. Nope. I don't think it starts at, at Denver. Mm-mm. 
Not against that defense. Not at all. Uh, and we have Dolphins at Raiders. Raiders. Raiders 2-0, yeah. Sadly, AFC West, man. I mean, maybe it's just a lucky to draw, but they're doing good. I think the Raiders also get the win. Yeah, I like the Raiders for that game. Here's a good one. Bucks at Rams. Ooh, uh, this is going to be a really uh, down-to-the-wire game, field goal game. Uh, it's going to be fun. Lots of scoring, I think. You're going to see higher 30s from both teams. Um, Tom Brady's firing on all cylinders. Matt Stafford looks good. I'm I'm going to say the Bucks win this, though. I'm with you. Tom Brady's hard to stop right now. The dude is playing. He's having a career year. Stetson's going Rams upset. Rams, okay, respectable, respectable. I don't think Sean McVay can stop this offense. Damn it. No. Next game will be Seahawks at Vikings. I think the Vikings can win this game because they're at home. They're on a three game. They're on a three game home. It's they're on a three game stretch at home right now. But I think that uh, they need to. Uh, Lights out football, man. You can't make mistakes, and you can't miss kicks. And um, I think I think the Vikings will win this week. Um, but if they don't, I wouldn't be surprised. Because, yeah, the, because I, of how the coaching's been, so we'll see. If there's a time to turn it around, it's the earlier the better. Uh, I'll be rooting for them. Yeah, I got shares of Justin Jefferson. Talent-wise, I mean... You guys have Justin Jefferson. You have Dalvin Cook. I don't see how you – I think you outshine the Seahawks. I think DK Metcalf is not playing up to caliber. Yep. Uh, you know, and I think Tyler – but the connection with Tyler Lockett's there. Uh, Tyler Lockett is not a um, – he can be covered. Yeah. And I think you guys have the defensive player players to get it done. So I, I'm going to go. They all just got to step up. We'll see what happens. We'll see what, what happens. What's – uh, Sunday night, Packers at 49ers. Packers are going to get things right in the regular season against the 49ers. They tend to struggle against the Niners, but they'll get they'll win this game. I don't see the Packers. just They're too hot right now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 49ers undefeated. Too many injuries. They're not going to be able to run the ball. I think uh, that's how that's I think. How I see things going with the 49ers. They're not going to be able to run the ball. Yeah, for sure. It's going to struggle. It's just too much inexperience behind that line. We'll see what happens. Uh, Monday Night Football. Eagles at Cowboys. Let's hear it. Stetson, I got you. Uh, I'm going Cowboys. I think they get back on the right track. I think that their offense is in a better place with CeeDee Lamb. But it could change because of the fact that Amari Cooper is a little banged up now. So hopefully he's healthy and gets back in. I think it, the the win is going to be contingent on that. Uh, it's going to be a big focus. Um, my big my predictions for this game is that they got to get Zeke going. They have to get uh, that fixed. Graham blew his Achilles. Oof. Yeah, 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 I'm going. I'm going Cowboys. I'm going with Cowboys after learning that. I didn't know that. Cowboys. I gotta go, I gotta go Cowboys, man. They put respect on my team's name. They ran the ball on my team. I left a sour taste in my mouth. It's called <laughs> loss. It's okay. Uh, Cowboys take this one. So with all that being said, guys, um, we're going to call rap, and we're going to say thanks for hanging out with us today. Um, well, if you have friends that need advice, if you have friends that you think would like this podcast, please share it. Please retweet it when I when I release the episode. Um I just want to go ahead on while John's in here too and just say uh, a quick thank you for um, sponsoring the stream from Raise Energy. They have workout products, energy drinks, and to-go cans, um, packets. Um, also, they have pre-workouts, post-workouts, whey proteins. Check that out. Use code the Avenger at all caps at checkout. You'll get 15% off your order there. And then... Um, yeah, so we'll leave it at that. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Uh, if you guys want to get more involved with with me and a bunch of other like uh, fantasy uh, football people uh, that 
or fantasy football analysts that talk about sports quite a bit, go ahead and check out the Sports Me app. Um, and joining on the conversations and the, the debates and the battles. Um, you can download the app there and you can give your give your hot takes on sports uh, with me. John, you should download the app. It would be, be a really fun time. Uh, but on that note, we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll say see you later. And uh, love you guys. Uh, come back next week. Goodbye.